Hi, I'm Matt. I've just got back from London where I went to see The Cure at a BST Hyde Park Festival in Hyde Park, funnily enough. It was The Cure's official 40th anniversary show. It's now 40 years, almost to the day, since The Cure played their first gig as The Cure. So they've been The Cure for 40 years. That's a long time. There's a lot of noise going on around me and outside. Um, so I've got a Cure-based playlist to try and mask the sound a little bit. Bonus points for you if you can name all the songs <laughs> that are playing in the background during this video. Um, but do try to listen to what I'm saying as well, thanks. Uh, some honourable mentions to some of the other bands that played on the day. Um, you know, all the bands were, were good in their own way, but I, I would like to give some honourable mentions to Slow Dive, who are a brilliant band and were absolutely glorious in the in the very, 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 very hot mid-afternoon sunshine. Golf rap were also brilliant. 40 years worth of hits, and we had the vast majority of them, I would say, on, on Saturday. It was a very hit-heavy set. A few fan favourites thrown in as well. It really made me realise just how many hits they've had over the years. A lot of people only know them for the, for the hits, or a certain select few of their hits. I'm someone that loves those songs, but I also love their album tracks and their, their, you know, their more rare songs, a lot of great B-sides as well. I think they're very much an albums band as well as a singles band, weirdly enough. It's almost like, they, it's almost like two separate bands. There's one band that writes great singles and another band that writes great albums, completely separate from the singles. The version of The Cure that we saw on Saturday was very much the singles band. Almost everything was in there that you could have you could have asked for um, from a, a greatest hits Cure set. There were a few album tracks as well, and I I have to mention, if only tonight we could sleep, which is always such a such a moody and atmospheric piece of music. It was perfectly placed in the set because the sun was actually setting during that song after a whole day of standing in that park in the blazing hot sunshine. It was such a relief. The song fit that moment perfectly with the sun going down at that moment. And Robert Smith even commented afterwards that, oh, that made the sun go down as if he didn't plan it that way, as if he didn't plan the set list perfectly so that the sun was going to be setting at that precise moment. I think he probably did, to be honest. The set started with it was as if they were going to play the whole Disintegration album in full, which would have been a, just incredible. But at the same time, I don't think it would have worked because because of how hot and sunny it was, that album, and in particular the two songs that they played at that point, the first two songs, Plain Song and Pictures of You, those, those songs and that whole album, it's as if it's just carved from ice. That's how it feels to me. It's such a wintry album in, in so many ways. I don't think it would have worked to play the whole thing. And it did feel a bit odd. I'm not complaining because they're, they're stunning songs and it was brilliant to hear them. But it did feel a bit odd hearing likes of Plain Song in the, in the blazing hot sunshine. We, we did hear about half of, I think six songs from Disintegration, which is half the album. And it's, it's probably most days I would say it's my favourite Cure album, so absolutely no complaints from me whatsoever about that, but <laughs> I think maybe it would be a bit better suited on um, for an indoor show. And there are, they have kind of hinted that they might be doing some uh, 30th anniversary disintegration based live activity next year, so that would be, that would be brilliant. It was a, just, a, just a brilliant occasion, um, very much hands in the air festival vibe as promised by Robert Smith with so many hits, even the security people looked like they were enjoying it at times, which is weird because normally they're so stony faced like beef eaters, aren't they? Some of them really looked like they were into it. Oh, in between days, what a moment when that started. Quite early on in the set, I have to say, I assumed songs like that would be later on. The, the whole set was just so full of hits that it was there were hits early on and, and in between and towards the end. It, oh, it was just a brilliant occasion. Everyone was, was so into it. The crowd, I've never seen such a 
such a rapturous crowd. Uh, so many people love this band. There were so many highlights, and I, I could, I really could talk about this for so long, um, but I haven't. I've got other things to do, unfortunately, with my life. Robert Smith looked like he was really, really enjoying himself, apart from the fact that he was facing the sunshine, and it was like this the whole time, um, which which was quite amusing and, and completely understandable, I have to say. He looked like he was having the time of his life, and so were so many of us out there. He was in great form, seemed very happy to be there. I, I'm not sure how many of us were watching The Cure exactly, um, somewhere between 60 and 70,000 people. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Simon Gallup, the, the other almost original member, not quite an original member, but very close to being an original member. Oh, it's just, it's just brilliant to watch, you know, going up and down the stage, playing those legendary bass lines. Reeves Gable's tearing it up on guitar. He's such a great addition to the lineup of the band. Obvious mentions would be uh, A Night Like This and uh, On the Edge of the Deep Green Sea. Brilliant, brilliant performances. It was a, it was like a part a, a true festival party kind of atmosphere. There were some darker moments. The song disintegration was was really hard hitting actually, and um, really hypnotic. That was a great way to end the the main set before they had that encore. And the encore itself was was quite surprising. Yeah, they did the likes of lullaby, but they ended with. Five, three imaginary boys era songs. You had this really exhilarating punk energy at the end of the set, which was a brilliant way to finish. Very fitting because it was the fortieth anniversary, and they were going right back to the beginning at the end, which was a brilliant way, a very fitting way to end. But you had five songs: "Boys Don't Cry," "Jump in Someone Else's Train," "Grinding Halt." 10.15 Saturday night, which they started six minutes too late. It was 10.21 Saturday night when they started it. Very bad timing, guys, come on. And, of course, they ended on Killing an Arab, which was just just absolutely stunning way to finish. Very hard-hitting stuff. So much raw energy in there. This is the band that, that half an hour or so earlier were playing a, a, a glorious jangle pop song like Friday I'm in Love and then they're going out with this this hard hitting punk song essentially and that, that pretty much sums up why why ultimately why I love this band I mean there are so many reasons to love them but what I always say is that they're, they've got such a, a rich and diverse back catalogue it is almost like two or even three different bands because you've got this very very dark side that is less known to the more casual cure observers who might only know the the big hits the, the the glorious pop songs you've got this very dark side that is at times is is the the utter depths of despair whether it's heartbreak or whether it's existential despair and then at the other end you've got this absolutely stunning brilliant beautiful pop music which no other band does as convincingly as The Cure and then they also do everything in between those two extremes and they do it all so well it's unbelievable I mean they're like they're like the Beatles to me. How the Beatles are for a lot of people, that is what the cure is to me. They do everything so well. They've got the pop sensibility and they've got the much more experimental, darker edge. I really love this band. I did before and I do now after this concert. I, I really hope I get a chance to see them again. Hopefully next year. Hopefully there'll be a new album and hopefully we'll get plenty more chances to see them yet because they were the way they they performed on Saturday was. They were I think they were at the top of their game and it bodes well for the future. It really does, but it bodes well for another. At least another decade.
Hopefully more than that, but we'll see, we'll see. Were you there? Were you there? There were a hell of a lot of people there, so there's, if you're watching this, there's quite a good chance that you were there. I'm sorry if you weren't, because you, you missed uh, something pretty special. Hopefully you get the chance to see them again soon. But if you were there, let me know your thoughts. What did you think of it? Follow me on Twitter at Matt Ford Music. Get in touch with me, on, with me on there. I've been tweeting about The Cure constantly for the past few days. And I'm likely to continue yet retweeting other people's tweets as well. Thanks. See you again soon. Goodbye.